Today on Beer TV, we're gonna talk reef keepers. Hey guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome to another week of the Beerus 160, where every week we do our best to help you guys, members of the reefing community, enjoy your tanks and find new ways to explore the hobby. We do that by following the setup and progression of this 160-gallon reef tank. This week, we're going to focus on all three different models of the Reef Keeper, the Light Basic, Light Plus, and Reef Keeper Elite. We'll share where we believe the Reef Keeper fits in the market, what it does, what it doesn't do, who we'd recommend it to, how we'd use all three in a tank like this one, and then program a final solution using the control module and the My Reef 2.0 software. Digital Aquatics has been producing aquarium controllers for close to a decade and arguably produces the easiest to use controller out there and absolutely the most affordable options. That's where I think this entire episode or even controller mini series is going to revolve around. What is it you and your individual tank actually needs from a controller and what best serves your particular budget? Let's start with what the Reef Keeper does do. Monitors and controls equipment based on internal timers, pH, temperature, salinity, ORP, float switches, 0 to 10 volt inputs, has internal alarms, humidity controls, wave maker functions, and a few accessories like dosing pumps and moonlight LEDs. All the basics of a solid aquarium controller and would certainly be capable of controlling basically anything important on the BRS-160. Programming the controller can be done directly on the control pad, which is pretty easy and intuitive. I think maybe half of the users will do it this way because most of the programming is really easy to do on that control pad, particularly if you're making small tweaks or changes or adding a single piece of new equipment. The other half of the users will probably program using the PC software called MyReef 2.0, which is about as intuitive as it gets and probably the quickest way to do the initial programming. More or less, just a bunch of drop-down menus and a few quick decisions and you're done. We'll demonstrate both of these methods in just a minute. The Reef Keeper does all of this and at the lowest cost out there. However, everything in today's market is measured by its closest competitor. So what doesn't it do? Well, the biggest element is it doesn't connect to the internet, meaning while you can activate visual and audible alarms, you can't get email or text message alarms. Also means you can't program it from your phone or other browser-based applications, check on the tank remotely, or enter tank data. The Reef Keeper also doesn't have as many accessories as other controllers and lacks some of the really advanced and complicated programming options. All this is pretty much a game changer for many people, so who is the Reef Keeper for? Well, there are really two distinct groups of reefers out there that the Reef Keeper serves great. First, those that simply have no desire to spend $500 to over $1,000 purchasing and accessorizing their aquarium's controller. End of the day, just because most of us would like a fancy Italian sports car, and everyone who owns one already will tell you how awesome it is, that doesn't mean that we have to be willing to spend all of our expendable cash on buying one. The Reef Keeper Basic can be had for just over 100 bucks. In the plus into the 200s, it doesn't go 200 miles an hour, park itself, or stream music from your phone, but it does control your tank's pH, ORP, salinity, temperature, humidity, as well as water levels, timers, lights, dosing pumps, auto top-offs, and a handful of other accessories, as well as audible and visual alarms to tell you when something's going wrong, which in a majority of cases will either prevent issues or let you catch the issue in time to do something about it. There's a second, less obvious group of people, the Reef Keeper serves as well? Well, when asked, many people would say they'd love an automated home that opens and closes your blinds, orders food for you, plays different types of music based on the time of the day, calls police or fire automatically in emergencies, all kinds of stuff. It isn't the cost that prevents this for many of us. It's the complexity of installation and programming. Most people have no desire to read a couple hundred page manual to learn how to turn on a light when they enter the room or add milk to their shopping list. They'd rather just flip a switch on when they enter the room or write down the milk when they need to. In that mindset, the Reef Keeper is just plain simple to operate, or at least I can confidently say the easiest to install and program of any of the controllers out there currently. Something that you'll get to see for yourself in this episode. So if you know your tolerance for reading massive instructions or endlessly searching forums for programming help is low to non-existent, you might be better served by something simple and easy, even if it's missing some of the fancier elements. There are three basic versions of the Reef Keeper, the Light Basic, the Light Plus, and the Elite. Today we're going to show you how we'd use each on the BRS-160 starting with the Basic Light. The Basic Light is just over 100 bucks and comes with a control head, a single power bar, and a temperature probe. 
This is basically what the installation would look like mounted with two additional power bars to cover all 22 outlets required on the BRS-160. We're going to use the light basic to control three basic functions on the tank. Temperature, the T5 lights, and our two-part dosers. This is going to remove three to four timers from our system. One power bar or two temperature controllers, which in this case cost us in the neighborhood of 300 bucks, all replaced with the Reefkeeper basic light, which is just over 100. There are almost no instances where the basic light doesn't cost significantly less than the alternative equipment, in most cases by multiples, even if it's just some timers and a decent power bar, but once you consider basically any temperature controller, it's an easy home run. To get the most out of our four outlets, we combine both of the T5 plugs and both heater plugs with a couple different adapters so they both use a single plug for each, and then put the dosers on their own outlets so they can be controlled individually if needed. One note on the dosers is they should be plugged into outlet one and four, which are both relay outlets and offer increased reliability on low power consumption items like dosing pumps. This is what the basic setup looks like. I'm going to start with the MyReef 2.0 software because that's the easiest to understand. You're going to need a Windows-based computer for this, so you can either bring your laptop to the aquarium, or if you don't own a laptop, you can run a USB extender cord to your PC or bring the controller to the PC. Since most of the controls can be done on the controller's pad, I'd probably do the initial programming at the PC because it's faster, and then make tweaks over time using the control pad. Once you're in the MyReef 2.0 software, locate the power bar labeled PC4 or PB4 and click it, then set up. This is just naming it. I'm going to name it Power 1 with the assumption that at some point we would add another and label it Power 2 or something similar. First outlet we're going to set up is the calcium channel. Click the setup on the channel and then name it calcium. There are three basic functions of on, off, and auto. On and off are pretty self-explanatory. Auto is when you want the reef keeper to control the outlet based on the settings we're about to make. In most cases, you'll set this to auto on every outlet, unless it's a simple outlet for something like a charger you just want on all the time, in which case you'd select on. With our BRS dosing pumps, we have a set flow rate of 1.1 milliliters a minute, so adjusting how much they dose is a simple function of how long they're on. Let's say we wanted to dose 110 milliliters a day, that'd be 100 minutes a day. So the best option from the function menu is a multi-timer. The way this works is we're going to set up a timer and then assign this timer to an outlet. Inside my reef, it's really easy because they're all on the same page. Click the timer setup and the timer options will open. We'll select timer one and set that up. If we want to dose all 110 milliliters starting at midnight, that's as simple as leaving the start time at midnight and an hour and 40 minutes for the on duration, which is 100 minutes or 110 milliliters. Select every day, ignore all the other settings, hit save and apply, doesn't get much easier than that. However, some of us want to do something a bit more advanced and space that dose out more. Let's say I wanted to spread the dose out over six hours. I can change the on time to 10 minutes, the off time to 50 minutes, and then repeat to five, which would turn the pump on for 10 minutes at midnight, then turn off for 50 minutes, then a repeat count of five, which will repeat this five additional times for the net result of six total 10 minute on periods or doses, basically 10 minutes at midnight, one, two, three, four, and five a.m. You can really set this to spread out the dose over the day any way you like. Once you have the timer set up, hit apply and save. Now on the power bar menu, select timer 1 and 1 from the drop down, which is a timer we just set up. Leave timer 2 set up to none. In the default section, there's a radio button that says off or on. This is the default state you want the power bar to send the plug to if for some reason it loses connection to the control module. Maybe your cat chewed through the cord or something similar. In this case, we want the dosing pump to default to off because I'd rather dose nothing than everything. We have no alarms based on this outlet, so we'll leave that at none, and the standbys are like feed modes. In this case, we don't need a feed mode for a dosing pump either, so we'll leave these unchecked and select OK. The calcium doser is completely programmed and ready to be plugged in. We can go ahead and do the exact same thing for the alkalinity doser in outlet 4. We did keep the outlet separate, so you can dose the alkalinity at different times of the day if you want to make a different timer. For instance, you can select timer ID 2, do the same on duration of 10 minutes, off for 50 minutes, repeat 5 times in every day of the week, but start it at 12.30 a.m. or even 1 p.m. rather than midnight to spread the alkalinity and calcium doses out. Then select timer 2 on the outlet and hit OK. Alkalinity dosing outlet is programmed. Next up are our heaters. Select the outlet you planned on plugging them into and hit setup. Name it heater, select auto, and select heater from the function drop down menu and enter the temperature you'd like to keep the tank at. 
Note that the hysteresis is grayed out and set to 0.1. This is just the range the controller is going to turn the heater on and off at. Meaning once it hits 78 degrees, it will let it drop one tenth of a degree before it turns it back on. A vast majority of people will set it to 0.1 and that's why it's grayed out. If you want to make that range larger, you can do that by selecting controller rather than heater and eye temp is your sensor, but not many people will do that. This one is debatable, but I'm going to set my heaters to default to off if the power bar ever gets disconnected from the control head. Some people might select on because most heaters have their own internal thermostat and controller. The reason I don't is because the heater's integrated controller could have failed months ago and I'd never know because the reef keeper is functioning correctly. I'd rather just be safe and have the heater set to off if there's ever an issue. Related to this, this is where we're going to set up our first alarms. If the temperature is ever outside the desired range, I want to know about it so I can do something about it. Click alarm, set up ID1 and check flash and beep so you get a visual and audible alarm that something's wrong. There is an option for email which is based off the net module. Open and honest, the net module is not the greatest implementation so we don't sell it or talk much about it. I wouldn't bother with it personally so we're not going to check email. In this case I want an alarm if the temperature ever goes below 77.5 degrees or above 78.5 indicating the heaters failed or something is overheating my tank like my home's air conditioner failed or particularly hot equipment like lighting is heating the tank up. Select eye temp under device 1, trigger at 77.5 degrees and below, apply and then repeat with 78.5 and above, hit the apply and save. You now have two alarms set up to visually and audibly let you know when there's an issue with your tank's temperature. Note that there are additional devices grayed out on each alarm. With the Reefkeeper Elite you can use multiple sensors or parameters on the same alarm but that option isn't available on the light. Note that we left the alarm drop down set to none. This is because we're not going to use the alarm to actually control this outlet because the controller is already doing that based on our settings. I'll show you what this drop down menu is for in our next outlet. Next up is our T5 light. Select the outlet you plan on plugging them into and hit setup. Name the channel T5, select auto and from the function drop down menu select lighting other. In this case we want our lights to turn on at 9 a.m. and off at 5 p.m. every day of the week. Leave sure on unchecked which is largely for halide lighting. In the event of a power disruption, Shuron will give the halide bulb some time to cool down before firing them back up. We don't need that with T5, so leave it unchecked. I'd also like to set the default to off here because I'd rather have no light than have them permanently on if something goes wrong with the connection to the head unit. I think that you'll find that most items are set to default off. I'd also like to set up another alarm. If the tank is overheating for some reason, I want the controller to turn off my lights because they contribute to the heat. In this case, I want to set up alarm 3 to flash and beep if the tank ever goes over 80 degrees. Hit apply and save. Now in the alarm drop down menu, select alarm 3 which we just set up and make sure the radio button is selected to off. It's easy to mistake the on off radio button for turning the alarm on and off but that's not what it's for. This is the state the outlet is on if the alarm, in this case number 3, is ever triggered. Since we have it set to off, if the tank ever hits 80 degrees, not only will the visual and audible alarm goes off but it will also trigger our lights to turn off because the radio button is set to off. So that's it, other than some calibration and basic setup, the basic is programmed and ready to be used. I mentioned that you can do all this on your control pad as well. I'm not going to bore you with every last step, but I will give you an example of how this works with the T5 outlet. It's almost the exact same process, but done in sequential steps rather than all in one single page. Start by selecting menu, scroll down to the modules and select enter. Hit the down key until you find your power bar. In this case we named it power bar 1, but by default it's called PB4 or PC4. Then select your channel or outlet. It will display the name as well as the current state of the outlet. In this case it says T5 and it's currently on. Similar to before, the first step is mode with on, off and auto as the options. Select auto, enter and save. Then select function and scroll down until you locate light other. Hit enter and enter your 9 a.m. on time, enter and 5 p.m. off time. We have no need for standbys or feed modes with T5 lighting so select ignore and enter. Again we want the default state if it ever gets disconnected from the controller to be off so select that and enter. Once you're done program the outlet hit back and right under function will be your alarm. Hit enter on the alarm, select alarm 3, hit enter and we want the action to be off then save. Notice it doesn't give us an opportunity here to program the alarm. On the control pad that's done slightly different, to set up your alarms, navigate back to the home screen and select menu. Scroll down to alarms, hit enter, and then select the alarm you want to program. In this case, number three, there are three letters you can toggle on and off being FBE, which stands for flash, beep, and email. We're going to toggle flash and beep on, but leave email off. 
In this case, the alarm is based off temperature. So select I temp as a device. Our set point of 80 degrees, and then trip went over. Enter and save. So that's all there is to programming the Reef Keeper. You can see for just over 100 bucks, we've added a lot of redundancy, protected the tank, and removed a lot of clutter and unnecessary fail points from the tank. All the rest of the equipment, like the power heads, return pump, LEDs, and auto top off, will run off of standard power bars. On a related note, these P3 kilowatt power bars are pretty sweet. 10 outlets, digital backlit LCD display, a power state, and power consumption with volts, amps, and watts. Adjustable breaker, surge protection, soft power up, and line filter. These things are basically a reefer's dream power bar. We do have them on our site, and they do cost more than a bargain bin power bar, but they sure are awesome. And what we've been using on our current installs the reason that we brought them in for you so the beauty of the reef keeper light basic is well you got in at about a hundred bucks the system is expandable to a total of four modules meaning you can add up to three more power bars but more commonly add a couple power bars and a module that monitors and controls pH salinity switches or ORP this is where the reef keeper light plus comes in which comes with two power bars one control head a temperature probe a ph probe and the slx module which has one ph port and orp port which can also be used as a second ph port as well as two switch ports this is a total of three modules which leaves room for one more additional power bar salinity module or really any other module you might like just to give you an example of how we would use the SLX module and the extra power bar provided by the Plus package, I think we'd run four additional systems on the second power bar, starting with the four Tunes power heads and one Ecotech Vectra return pump. I'm going to plug all five of these pumps into the same P3 power bar and then plug that power bar into a single Reef Keeper outlet. Really only reason for this is so I can use a Reef Keeper standby or feed mode. I like to turn off all the pumps when I feed because it allows me to get food to the more timid fish as well as target feed some corals. In this case, I'd select the simple on off from the functions list with mode on. This is also one of those rare instances where I'd set the default to on because I'd like the pumps to stay on if it loses connection with the control head. Then select the SB1 check mark and off, which means this outlet will be off during the standby, then hit OK. You can adjust the length by selecting the standby setup and changing the time. Note there are four standbys with three grayed out. The light only has one standby, but the Elite has four. Now when I hit back on the display, it will say standby, and when I hit enter, it will go into standby mode with a countdown where I can feed my fish and corals without any of the pumps blowing everything around or going down the overflow. Closely related to that, I'm also going to set up my skimmer the same way. We're dosing all of these KZ additives, and I don't want to immediately remove them, so feed mode can be a good idea for the skimmer as well. In this case, select skimmer from the drop-down list. On is automatically selected, but there's a standby delay in addition to that. This is the additional time you want the skimmer to be off after the standby or feed mode is activated and been completed. I'm going to enter an hour here, which means the skimmer will stay off for an hour after the feed mode is completed to allow the corals to get the most from the KZ additives. One other thing I'm going to do with the skimmer is set up a switch to turn the skimmer off if the cup ever gets full so it doesn't make a mess. The SLX module that comes with the Plus has two switch ports, which I'd say are more commonly used for a pair of float switches and used as an auto top-off, but we have a different top-off solution so we can use them for applications like this. You will need a switch adapter kit to connect your float switch to the SLX module. Setting it up on a control pad looks like this. Menu, scroll down to alarms, select the alarm you want to use, in this case we'll use number four. Because this isn't a critical alarm, I don't need the audible beeping alarm, so I'm just going to set it up to flash at me, which is probably something I'd notice within a day. Scroll through the different options until I find SWA, which is switch A and trip when opens, which means when the float goes up from the water level in the cup, it will open the circuit to trigger the alarm, then hit save. In my Reef 2.0, it's similar but different. Open up your alarm, select alarm 4, then under the device, select SLX and SWA, again, which stands for switch A as your device to trigger your alarm. However, here it doesn't say open or close. It says trigger 0.5 above or below. Leave the 0.5 alone, and the above or below basically means open and close. Easiest way to understand this is above means high level, and below means low level with a typical float switch. In this case, we want the alarm to trigger when the float is up at the high level and the circuit is open, so we'll select above. One thing to keep in mind is most float switches are reversible too, meaning that you can slide the clip off the bottom and flip the float to reverse the open and close circuit positions. Basically, there's a small magnet inside the float that when it slides up and down, it's opening and closing a circuit. By flipping the float, you can change whether the float is normally closed by default or normally open. 
Now that we have the switch alarm set up, select alarm four on the skimmer outlet configuration. Make sure the radio button is selected to off and hit OK. Our skimmer will now perform smoothly with our feed or standby mode and automatically turn off when it's full as well as flash at us to let us know. We're also going to put our LED lights on a Reef Keeper controllable outlet for the same reason we put the T5 temperature control on if we ever need it. Last thing I'm going to do is put our refugium light on pH control. Refugiums can help remove a significant amount of carbon dioxide from the water and keep the pH stable. Many reefers will keep it on at night for that reason. We're just going to tell it to be on any time the pH is less than 8.3, which will have a similar effect. Open your last outlet, select auto, name it fuge or something similar. Then under function, select control. You'll need to select the sensor for the control, which in this case is inside the SLX module, then select pH. Enter 8.3. I'm going to leave the hysteresis at 0.1, but if the light ends up turning on and off more than I'd like, I'll switch it to 0.2, which will let the pH drop a bit further before it turns on again. In relation to that with the Reef Keeper Plus and the SLX module that comes with it, we can monitor and control based on pH, so I'm going to add an alarm based on pH the alkalinity doser. Just in case anything happens, I want it to turn off power to the dosing pump if the pH ever goes over 8.45, which is a strong indicator of an overdose, but won't commonly interfere with daily dosing and still within a range where serious damage to the tank is unlikely. The SLX module also has another switch point as well as one pH or ORP connection. I'm going to use a switch as an alarm to tell me when the water level is too low in the return pump area of the sump, which is an indicator that my ATO either timed out or another issue like a leak where the return pump is about to run dry and separate my tank's life support and the sump from the tank. I don't have a second use for a pH probe at the moment, so I'm going to use that port to monitor ORP. We covered ORP in detail in week 28 with ozone. I'm not running ozone in this tank, but monitoring ORP will give me a pulse on if there's a large increase in organics in the tank, like someone dumped in a ton of food to the tank, organisms are dying, or the skimmer somehow overflowed into the tank. In this case, the ORP would likely be lower. Well, strictly speaking, ORP is not a true measurement of water quality, as in if you have 350 and I have 380, my water's cleaner. But generally speaking, consistent numbers on the same tank do provide some legit insight into that tank's water quality. If historically speaking, your tank is always at 350 and then suddenly drops to 300, it's likely there was a large introduction of organics or sudden decrease in oxidants. This is where we move on to the Reef Keeper Elite. The price point climbs into the 300s, which is still a couple hundred dollars less than some of the other similar eight outlet controllers that come with pH controls and a probe, but the gap is narrowed enough that some reefers might jump up to get the internet and cloud capability associated with those more expensive options. However, if your max budget is into the 300s, the Reef Keeper Elite is a solid option. With the Reef Keeper Elite versus the Light Plus, this is a list of extra features you can expect for the extra 70 or so bucks. The biggest one being rather than a total of four modules with the Light, you can install up to 63, which is a number that almost no one will ever break. That means you can install as many power bars, pH, salinity, humidity, temperature, dosing pumps, moonlight, pump, lighting, or switch modules as you like. They also increase the amount of alarms from 16 to 63, and the alarms can operate with multiple probes or inputs with an and or programming technology. The standby modes from 1 to 4, the timers from 16 to 63, wave maker channels from 2 to 4. On top of that, you also get a more advanced four-line display with multiple colors and icons, 11 buttons including direct access to inputs or sensors, and outputs like outlets. All in all, not a bad offering for the additional 70 bucks. We set up this panel to give you a general idea of how many modules you can run on an Elite. We have the SLX, pH, ORP, temperature, and switch module. The SL2, V2, salinity, pH, temperature, and switch module, including a couple of Reef Keeper float switch brackets. The 0 to 10 volt ALC lighting module for the dimmable T5s or some LEDs. 0 to 10 volt APC pump module for pumps like our Tunes's. An air humidity and temp module, a second water temp probe so we can monitor the sump and tank independently. Two dosing pumps and a hub which allows for cleaner wiring, a remote display so I can have one here in the fish room as well as one on the front of the tank. The Elite uses MyReef 2.0 software as well. The controls on the more advanced pad are a bit different but just as intuitive once you've done it a couple times. All in all I think this is a pretty capable controller and a good value. We also got something kind of cool going on this week for any of you that thought that these mounting board installations with the Reef Keeper Basic Light, Light Plus, and Elite were cool. I got good news for you. We're giving all of them away to you guys next week. So this is your chance to get one of these awesome controllers for free and already mounted with some of these really cool P3 power bars. 
So last week we asked all of you what your most desired feature from a controller. Notification of pump failure was the number one option. And second was outlet-based power consumption. Hopefully all the manufacturers out there are listening. This week we're asking all of you how important is internet connectivity on your controller. As always, if you learned something new this week, let us know with a quick thumbs up and subscribe because you do not want to miss next week, week 45, the Neptune Apex Aquarium Controller.